Some of the smartest chips in history died before they had a chance to shine. Huge ideas, massive ambition and total failure. Welcome to the chip graveyard, where the great silicons goes to rest. But it's going to still shape the future. Today is a special edition where we're going off the roadmap a bit. I'm calling this one the Chip Graveyard Halloween Edition. It's a look back at some of the most promising chips and chip companies that you didn't make it. These were big ideas with strong tips, lots of attention, in some cases the huge investments. But for one reason or another, they just didn't survive. They were not bad, in fact, most of them, they were just ahead of their time. But as we know in this industry, being early or smart isn't always enough. Let's start with one of the most ambitious chip startups in 2000s. Transmatter Software Power Chips. Transmatter launched in the late 90s with a bold idea. Built a simpler chip and used software to make it run x86 programs like Windows and PC apps, just like Intel processors. This code morphing software would translate instructions on the fly. The benefit? Lower power, simpler hardware and a better battery life at the time when mobile computing was just starting to take off. So what did go wrong? The translation layer slowed since down, performance wasn't great and once Intel started making its own chips more efficient, Transmatter lost its main advantage. OEMs didn't want to bet on a completely new platform either. What did we learn? A smart idea needs more than just a vision. You also need performance, timing, and the support from the ecosystem. Transmatter has the innovation, but not the follow through. Next one is Intel Itanium, a new pause that never took off. Next one is Itanium, Intel's big push in 64 bit computing. In early 2000s, it was built on a new architecture called IA64 and completely different from x86. The new concept was EPIC, where the software helps the chip run instructions in parallel. This required the new tools, new compilers, and the whole new way of writing software. Why did it fail? The compilers couldn't keep up. The software needed fully unlock Itanium's power never materialized. Meanwhile, AMD introduced x86-64, which kept compatibility with existing software, but added 64-bit support. That version took off. Eventually, even Intel gave up on Itanium. The takeaway? If you try to reinvade the whole stack, hardware and software, you need the ecosystem behind you. Otherwise, even a giant like Intel can miss. Next one, Zilog Z8000, overshadowed by history. Most people know Zilog because of Z80, a famous 8-bit chip used in early computers, game consoles, and even some calculators. But Zilog also created Z8000, a 16-bit processor meant to compete with Intel 8086. Technically, it was impressive. Clean design and good performance, but Intel had one big win, the IBM PC. That design decision basically sealed the deal for x86's dominance. So what did happen to Z8000? It never caught in the mainstream. It saw some use in embedded systems, but it was mostly left behind. Lessons learned? Sometimes success isn't just about technical quality. It's about being in the right place at the right time. One major design can change everything. Let's look at the other honorable mentions from the chip crypt. Cyrix, an x86 competitor in the 90s, known for good price to performance, but couldn't keep up with Intel's and AMD's pace and brand strengths. Tech Alpha, a true powerhouse, 64-bit risk before it was cool, but DEX business troubles and shifting ownership led to its slow fate. SunSpark, once a leader in enterprise servers, but as x86 took over and the cloud changed everything, Spark couldn't keep its foothold. Why do we look back? Because these stories remind us how hard this business really is. It's not just about having a good chip. You need the right market conditions, support from developers, strong partners, and even a bit of luck. 
We see it today too with the cost of AI chips, risk with startups, and in new players trying to rethink what the processes should look like. Some will make it, others might end up in the next version of this episode. So next time you hear about a bold new chip architecture, just remember, great ideas don't always equal a great outcomes, but they do shape the industry in a way that last. That's it for the special edition of Chips Weekly. Thanks for joining me on this short trip through the silicon history. I'll be back next week with your regular dose of cheap news, our chip of the week and one inside you won't want to miss. Until then, I'm Diana and remember, in semiconductors, even the ghosts have something to teach us. Thanks for listening to Chips Weekly by Diana. See you next time.